Hello, welcome to my Thursday afternoon 2 o'clock Facebook Live. Today I'm sharing with you this lovely card I had from my retreat day. It actually features a celebration stamp set, but I wanted to show you the, the gorgeous technique of using our watercolour pencils and also to showcase these fabulous cards and envelopes. This is probably the one I'll use today. The envelopes are printed with a gorgeous coloured insert and flap on the envelope. So all of the envelopes are like that. But the cards come in these lovely warm tones here. Or here's another kit I've got ready to go. Pop that over there. Or these cool tones which gives you lots and lots of options and lots of flexibility. Let me show you where they are in the catalogue. They are right at the back, actually, here. The Enjoy the Adventure Memories and More Cards and Envelopes. So 20 cards, 20 envelopes for $17.50. So apart from being really fabulous, already made, they're really, really good value, exceptional value, and you can do anything with them. They do coordinate perfectly with the Enjoy the Adventure Memories and More card pack. However, you can just use them as cards and envelopes, and I absolutely love buying cards and envelopes like that. And I'm pairing those cards and envelopes with the Greatest Journey bundle, which has beautiful paper, stamps and dies and twine, and these lovely enamel stickers. But I'm just using the stamp set with the lovely Oh, so that's Greatest Journey. What was the other one called? Enjoy the Adventure, I think. So Enjoy the Adventure and Greatest Journey. Okay, so that's all of that in the catalogue. So there's the Greatest Journey stamp set. Has some really good um, greetings, I think. And I really love the dies that go with it. But that, that's for another day. I'll show you that in another day. And then I'm pairing it with In the Country stamp set, which was one of the stamps from Celebration, which is now finished. But basically, it's just to show you a technique of colouring using stamping blends. Uh, no, not stamping blends, Julia. Uh, watercolour pencils. Our awesome watercolour pencils. So I'll just pop you out of the way. Put you guys all here. And this is my card base, so I don't actually need you till later on. Here's my pieces of card and that lovely Greatest Journey twine, which comes in pumpkin pie, coastal cabana and garden green. So you can choose whatever. I used two on this card, just the green, just the pumpkin pie on those ones. The cardstock I'm using to create this watercolour image is shimmery white cardstock. And that was intentional because shimmery white is very forgiving when you're using a, a water painter. So you can add plenty of water to the surface and it doesn't affect the quality of the cardstock. Whereas when you're using the other cardstock, it doesn't take long before it gets very stressed by too much water. So I'm just pairing that with soft suede. Those, those are my background pieces of paper. So all of my pieces of cardstock are shimmery white. And I'm going to use this image from the In the Country stamp set. So this time my card will be landscape orientation. And I'm stamping with Stays On Saddle Brown Ink. Stays On Ink is the solvent ink pad. So it is perfect for watercolouring. It doesn't, it's waterproof, doesn't bleed. It's great for using watercolouring. But the Saddle Brown Ink, I think, sometimes gets uh, overlooked in our catalogue. But it's great. It's a really nice, soft colour subtle color so it's great for your watercoloring i might just use my that's a bit quieter sorry about the noise i'll just pop the lid on one thing about your solvent based ink it does dry out very very quickly so you do have to make sure you re-lid it as soon as you've used it so i'm using the roadway and the gate image for my stamp this time and there it is. Isn't that beautiful? In fact, you don't even have to colour it in. The image is so lovely and detailed. While I'm stamping, though, I'm going to stamp my inside piece and my greeting for the front of my card. I'm using Wishing You Joy in this next adventure, which could be for almost any occasion, really. 
So, and can you see my photopolymer stamps have a lovely yellow brown ochre tinge from using this old saddle brown ink. So they've been used by uh, about 30 people now. So they are stained somewhat, but it doesn't affect their ability to stamp beautifully and it doesn't stop me cleaning it every time I use it. So this moment is the start of something great. I should actually give this to our youngest daughter who started uni this year. She's been working for the last two years since she's been out of school. Look at that. Now I want to stamp on that again. So I will do the right thing this time, Julia. Get my scrap piece of paper and my piercing mat, which actually helps stamping, especially when you're using photopolymer stamp. So I'm going to stamp. Look, much more crisp image. I've just saved the day by using the piercing mat, which I should have used right from the get-go. Oh well. Oh well. Done now. So that's good. Okay, all my stamping's done. Now, why don't I just put this inside the, the card? That way I can get it out of the way and it's in no danger then of getting accidentally coloured on or something like that. So this moment is part of something great. Pop that inside my card. I always like to put an insert, something beautiful inside my card. It gives the actual card lots more stability and it continues the theme that you have from the front of your card. So it's a lovely way to finish it off and give it far more professional finish. All right, so watercolour pencils. We have two lots of watercolour pencils. Currently we have the assortment two and the assortment one. So there's the colours. Real Red Calypso Coral, Pumpkin Pie, Daffodil Delight, Old Olive, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, Rich Razzleberry, Melon Mambo, Early Espresso, Basic Grey, Basic Black and Whisker White. And then Assortment 2 has Cherry Cobbler, Flirty Flamingo, Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Granny Apple Green, Garden Green, Coastal Cabana, Balmy Blue, Night of Navy and Gorgeous Grape. So with all of them, you have unlimited options for colouring. So I think I'll just use this collection this time and I'll use the Old Olive and the Early Espresso for the pathway. So I'm not going to, I'm just doing a very light touch on my, the one thing you can do with watercolour pencils too is it's a very soft lead in the pencil, which is the beauty of watercolour pencils, which means you can press a little bit harder for a much darker colour or just press very lightly like I did there for a much lighter tone. And then I'm going to just scribble with my old olive right where the lines are on the image. That's making it nice and easy for me. And there we go. There we go, just following the lines. I'm not using any artistic skill whatsoever. And then just a little bit of color on the trees. So I'm leaving the pine trees as they are and putting a little bit of color on the round trees. There we go. And with the magic of water in our water painter, this is, uh, our water painter comes in a set of three, so there's a really wide one, a middle size, and a fine tip. But for what I'm doing here, you don't need any great strategy or finesse, because I'm just basically adding colour to an already amazing image. So that was just running along with my... And I am actually using my brush in the direction of the lines, you may have noticed. So I did my lines horizontally for those lines in the road. Now I'm doing vertical strokes. So that's just a little hint when you're colouring, whatever you're colouring, whether it's with pencils or a water painter or ink or whatever. If you actually move in the direction of your image, it will give you a much better effect with any colouring. Okay, now colour in my trees. There we are. And last of all, 
the railing. I've left that to the last because it's the darkest colour. Don't really have to think about cleaning my brush in between the tones. There we go, done. I wanted it nice and simple. I probably could put a little bit of sky with Bermuda Bay. So I just, I want darker tones for the sky right on the horizon line because as it disappears into the ozone layer, it loses a little bit of color. Okay, so I've just put a little bit of color there. And then using my brush, drag that color around. And I can overlap those trees a little bit because they've been stamped and the saddle brown stays on. So they'll be fine. There we are. Just very simple. And it makes me look a little bit like an, I'm, I'm an artiste. I'll just grab my nappy here and clean off my brush. Well used nappy. The youngest child's now 20 and they've been used as craft tools ever since. What a wonderful, wonderful invention a cloth nappy is. There we go, can put you guys out of the way. And I will adhere this. Make sure my glue starts onto my soft suede background. And a little bit of, whoops for the front of my card and there we are does that look about the center oh and I also get to show off the happy labels punch as well while we're at it this is another picker punch it has a little scallop edge and a ticket edge as you can see by my three cards here my favorite is the ticket edge but for you because I think you're lovely I'll give you the scallop edge so that you can see the difference so with all of the picker punches, I'm just sliding it exactly along the, the tracks. I have cut my cardstock to exactly one inch. So the three measurements are one inch for the widest, three quarters of an inch for the next, and um, half an inch for the center track. So then slide that along right to the very end, make sure it can't go any further. Use the heel of my hand, there we go. There's the scallop edge. How do you think that looks compared to the ticket edge? Which is your favorite? Leave me a comment and let me know. And I'll, I can't actually look at your comments while I'm working here. I'm still trying to learn how to do that with my Facebook lives. So hopefully, hopefully soon I'll be able to do that. So yeah, which is your favorite? You, you can obviously tell my favorite is the ticket. I absolutely love the ticket. And now the next thing we need to do is add some texture. Now this time, I don't think I'll use the Clipso Coral, but I'm going to use the Pumpkin Pie and I'm just going to strip the thread a little bit by twisting it a bit like you do when you do your embroidery thread, your cross stitch thread, there we go. And I'll do the same with my Garden Green, twist it, untwist it there and strip it down. There we are, because I want to go for a bit of a country look. <laughs> bit of... So I'm going to put glue all over the back of my title there. So that's the top of my title. I've flipped that over, so that's the top up there. And I'm going to start off with my pulled thread and make a little circle here and here. He's going for the, I'm not very good at the whole loosey goosey type looking thing, but this is my attempt at trying to be a, and I'm stuck, artistic. So make another circle here and here, put the end there. So how do we look so far? And that's gonna go there. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. But because I'm going down low, I need to adjust you to go over there on the end because it won't fit off the edge. Radio. So I'm going to overlap the colors now. Stick you there. For more artisticness. Good word that, Jules. 
and then another bit up here and another bit there now I'm not going to have another look I'm going to trust that it will look amazing or actually hope that it will look amazing and put dimensionals on the back just to secure it in all of the places Oop, there we go and peel the backings off those all right here we go how is it going to look wishing you joy in the next adventure now do i go straight i'm I'm going for the angle. There we go. Ooh, that's covered up all my pretty picture. See, I should have looked first, Julia. So there we go. All right. Oh, finally, finally, some very, very beautiful pastel sequins. These pastel sequins come in more than that little amount there. <laughs> I've used them all up. These pastel sequins are part of the Country Floral Lane Suite. They come in gold, petal pink, and balmy blue. And as you can tell by this sheet, I've used all of the gold and all of the balmy blue. There's the balmy blue, there's the gold. So this card is going to feature the petal pink, which has a lovely sort of almost holographic sheen to it, really. Actually, the balmy blue does as well. And one more, which I will put there. Okay, there you go. There's four versions of exactly the same card. That one I've coloured in a lot heavier than this one. Used a lot more tones and colours. And I'm missing a sequin off. There's a little glue spot just there, mini glue spot. Just peel that off. There we go. Fix that problem. And showing you the different backgrounds for the different images. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've got some great ideas. And look at your colouring in pens, your watercolour pencils. They're, they're absolutely marvellous. They, they really are fun to use and so easy. So easy with lots of colour options. Bye-bye now. I'll see you next, next Thursday at 2 o'clock. And thank you so much for joining me. And I'll answer your questions now. Bye-bye.